Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju's 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to this video where we are going to summarize the chapter Getting to Know Plants, that too in just under 30 minutes. Now in case if you want an in-depth chapter explanation for the same, the one-shot link for that particular video is available in the description. You can click on that and watch that video for an in-depth chapter explanation. So today our intent is to revise this chapter and make sure that we are masters with this chapter because many of you have this chapter coming in your final exams. So just to make sure that you have summarized and revised this chapter well, by the end of this video a Google form will be available to all of you. Again the link is there in the description. You can check out the questions there to see how much you have learned from this chapter. So without wasting any more time students, we will get started. Now, as you know, this particular chapter deals with plants, right? So when we say getting to know plants, what are plants? Well, we know that they are living organisms. And most often than not, when we think about plants, we think about the green color, we think about its leaves, we think about the fact that they can prepare their own food, we think about the beautiful flowers, fruits that we get from them. But if you look at it, most plants, they come in different shapes, different sizes, they're all different in their appearance. But nonetheless, most plants tend to have a similar structure. So what are the different parts that make up the plant? Well, we see that we first of all have a part which is present underneath the ground, which is the root. Then of course, we have the part which is present above, which is the shoot that has the stem. The stem bears the leaves, the, it also bears the flowers as well as the fruits, right? So now we see that all these different parts not only contribute towards the structure of the plant, but also have a specific function that it carries out. Thereby, all these parts come together and they make up the plant. So let's get started by understanding what are their different functions. Now if you talk about a plant, every most plants, especially flowering plants, we see that they all start their life with the help of a seed, right? So we sow a seed under the ground and this seed will germinate and grow into a new plant. Now we see that there are parts which are present underneath like the roots and parts which are present above. So let's get started with the first part which is the root. Now roots are parts which are present under the ground or under the soil. Now what is the function of the root? Why is it that roots are present under the ground? Well you see they have very two very important functions to play. First and foremost they provide anchorage to the plant. That means that if you see a plant is able to or most plants that you see like let's say certain shrubs or maybe some trees they're all standing upright. They're all fixed at one point. How is it that they're managing to stay at that one point on the ground? Well, that is because of the roots, right? So they act or they provide support and they fix them to the ground. And along with that, they also help in making sure that the soil is held in place and the top soil is not lost. So primary function is to provide a fixed place to the plant. Apart from that, we also see that the roots help in absorbing important minerals as well as water. So we see that roots that are present underneath, we also know that water is present in the soil. So we see that this water can be absorbed by the root. And we see that water is essential for various functions. Even to prepare food, plants require water. And this water and minerals is absorbed by the root. So if in your examination tomorrow they ask you, write two functions of the root or write two functions of the root system, then you know what you have to write about. Yes? Okay. Now let's move on to types of roots. Now it is not that every plant out there has the same type of root. Different plants have different types of roots and broadly we can categorize them into two. As tap root and fibrous root. Now in the case of tap root, we see that there is one main root or a primary root and from the primary root we see that there are branches that appear. So we see that there are branches that appear from the primary root and these branches could be secondary roots, tertiary roots, so on and so forth. But the main thing you need to know is that there is one main root and there are other roots that branch out from it. 
So this kind of root system is what we call as tap root system. So plants like hibiscus, rose, all of them exhibit your tap root system. As a matter of fact, even carrots are modified tap roots. So that's just some extra information out there for you. Next up, we have fibrous root system. Now, what is there in fibrous root system? Now, unlike the tap root where there is one main root, we see that in fibrous root, from one point, we see that there is various branching that happens. So many roots arise from one point, right? Or it is like a fiber or it branches out. So in the case of plants like, let's say, grass or wheat, um, we see that we observe fibrous root system. So they can ask you in the examination to differentiate between taproot and fibrous root with examples. And now you know what you have to write. Now let's move on to the second part, which is the stem. Now stem is the part which is present normally above the soil. And we see that stem is the part of the plant that bears the leaves, right? We see that it bears the flowers in plants which bear flowers as well as fruits. Now, if you look at it, different plants have different kinds of stem. And based on that, we can categorize plants into herbs, shrubs, trees, creepers and climbers. Now, in the case of herbs, we see that the stem is normally green and it is slender. Like in the case of coriander, where it is very slender and green and it is very thin as well. While in the case of shrubs, like probably in the case of hibiscus or in the case of lemon, we see that stems are pretty woody and they are slightly thicker than herbs. But they're not, these shrubs are not very tall, right? So when you look at height, herbs are not, herbs are pretty short, Shrub, uh, shrubs are taller than your herbs. Then of course we have the trees, where the stem is very broad and thick and woody and we call it as the trunk. And of course, we see that in such cases, trees go to a considerable height. So we see that branching is normally seen at the top, right? So we see that in trees, we have a trunk and the branching is on top. So if you see examples like mango, mahogany, they're all examples of trees. Then we have creepers and climbers. Now in creepers and climbers both, we see that the stems are weak. That means that they cannot stand upright. Like in the case of herbs, shrubs and trees that we saw, the stems were upright. But in this case, they are not upright. But rather they are either found creeping on the ground. That means they are found fallen vertically, I mean fallen horizontally, they are found creeping. Or at times we see that if there is a support system, these guys are found climbing on top of it. So if they are weak and they are found creeping or spread on the ground, we call them as creepers. Like pumpkins, watermelons, they are all examples of creepers. While climbers, examples could be grapes, right, which climb on a support and they are able to grow vertically. Now, this is again a very important difference that you need to know because they can ask you to differentiate between creepers and climbers with the help of examples for two marks. So, you need to write this down. So, as you know, stem that is there is the upright part that may has the flowers or that bears the flowers, the branches, the fruits, the flowers, I mean, and the leaves, right? Well, on the other hand, if you see, it's not just that it's a structural support. Stem also has important functions to carry out. So one of the important functions of stem is also to help with transport. Because we know that the roots that are there absorb the water, right? And then they, trans they need to transport it all the way to the upper parts like the leaves, right? So in this particular case, what do we observe? We see that from the roots, it is transported to different parts through the stem. So we see that stem again has a very important role to play when it comes to transport. Now let's move on to the third part which is the leaf. Now leaves come in different shapes, different sizes and in most cases leaves are green in colour. Now if you were to look at the structure of the leaf, we see that the leaves that are there have a broad, have a stalk that connects it to the stem which we call as the petiole. Then we see that the leaf surface that is there is what we call as the leaf blade or the lamina. Then we see that there is a line that runs in the middle of the leaf, which we call as the midrib. And then of course we see that there are these branches that come off from the midrib, which are called as the veins, right? Now we see that the midrib and the veins and the branches of the veins have these tube-like structures inside them. So there are these tube-like structures which bring the water and the minerals that were absorbed by the roots, transported through the stem and now through the veins it gets transported to different parts of the leaf. 
Now, why should water get transported to different parts? Well, you see, we often call leaves as the kitchen of the plant because it carries out a very important function called as photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is the process by which they utilize water and carbon dioxide from the surroundings in order to prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. And as a waste product or a byproduct, it gives out oxygen. So, in this particular case, to prepare their own food, they require water that gets absorbed by the roots and it's transported all the way on top. Now, if there is excess water, we see that excess water is lost from the aerial parts of the plant through the help of, through the uh, process called as transpiration. Which is why if you cover a, you know, let's say a plant which has many leaves and you cover it with a polythene bag. After some time, you see that on the surface of the polythene bag, you will observe various water droplets. So, these water droplets that get condensed on the surface of the a plastic bag is because of this process of transpiration. Why does transpiration happen? That is a process by which excess water that gets absorbed by the plant is lost from where the aerial parts like the leaf, right? So this is all about the structure and function of the leaf. Now again, like I said, we have veins that are there which are present on the surface of the leaf. Now these veins can be arranged in different patterns and the arrangement of leaves on the surface of arrangement of veins on the leaf is what we call as venation. And we see that venation can be of two types. We have reticulate venation and parallel venation. Now in reticulate venation, we observe that there is a midrib and from the midrib we see that there is a network or a branching of the veins that happen in this fashion. So we call it as reticulate. While on the other hand, in the case of parallel venation, we see that they either run parallel to the midrib the veins run parallel to the midrib or in the case like in the case of banana leaves, they run parallel to each other. So in such cases, we see that this is parallel venation. Beetroot, carrot and various plants like various trees like mango trees exhibit this. While if you see grasses like wheat, maize, ban uh, banana, all of them tend to show parallel venation. Now there is a relationship between venation and root system. Because normally if you see reticulate venation is seen in plants that tend to have taproot system or plants that have taproot, taproot system tend to show reticulate venation. While on the other hand plants which show fibrous root system <coughs> tend to have parallel venation or we can say vice versa. So they can ask you what kind of root system is found in plants having reticulate venation vice versa parallel venation or they can ask you what kind of venation or what kind of venation will be seen um, what kind of root system will be seen in a plant having reticulate venation so they could interchange these kind of questions but this relationship between root system and venation is something that you need to know now let's move on to the last part of it which is the flower now understand that not all plants produce flowers. There is a category of plants which produce flowers and we call them as flowering plants or a more biological term would be angiosperms. Now in this particular case, what do we observe? We see that flowers that are there are the reproductive organs. So we call them as reproductive organs of the plant because these flowers will eventually develop to form fruits and seeds, right? And we know that seeds are what will grow into a new plant. Hence, we see that flowers are very important. Now, if you look at a flower and if I ask you what are the different parts of the flower, you might probably tell me, ma'am, they have petals and that's pretty much about it. But trust me, there are more parts that make up the flower. So, in this case, we see that there are these green leafy structures called as sepals, which protects the flower. So, it protects the flower during the bud stage right? While we have petals which are the colorful parts, right? So we can say that they are the colorful parts which attract insects and various other organisms to visit it. Now if I call it as the reproductive organ, we see that they have male and female reproductive structures. Now the male reproductive structure is called as the stamen which produces certain specialized structures called as pollen grains that get involved in the production of let's say a young one. And then we also have the female reproductive parts which I'll draw it on this side which is called as the pistil. 
Now the pistil has the top portion which is called as the stigma. It has a long tubular part called as the style. It has a swollen base called as the ovary. And of course we see that inside it has ovules. Now these ovules are what will eventually develop into a seed, right? So post various changes that takes place, the ovary will ripen to become a fruit and the ovule will develop into the seed. The processes, of course, we will learn it in your higher grades. Just in 7th grade, you have a chapter called as Reproduction in Plants where we will dwell in greater detail. But you need to have a rough idea about the fact that these are the basic parts of the flower. They all come in different shapes, different sizes, different colors. And of course, they all contribute in, let's say, producing fruits and seeds and thereby propagating the plants. So with this everybody, as you see, we come to the end of today's class. I hope you found this video helpful in revising the chapter, getting to know plants. If you did, do not forget to let me know in the comments if it is enabled. And of course, students, don't forget to try out the Google form questions that we have, which is available in the description of this video. So thank you so much for staying with me till the very end. Hoping to see you all very soon again. Take care. Lots of love to all of you and bye-bye.